Hello, today we're going to be going over the 2024 Palomino Real Light. It is a 2114 model. We're going to be basically just kind of going around this side over here, starting off this way. Down here is a little storage compartment area down there. And these guys here, along with these compartments here, are going to be this gray key on your key set for these guys. You get our outside speakers on, you hear those guys operating and going. You got the outside awning lights on as well. Uh, we'll talk about the awning, but it is kind of, we got some uh, wind, wind advisory today, so we will not be operating the awnings. This guy here was, realistically, you will do nothing in here. This is basically so that service, service workers are able to access the 12 volt system to the fridge if something is going wrong. You guys would not really mess with anything inside this. All right, as we kind of come around towards the front, at the very front here, we do have three little ambient side. Up front, and that's going to be controlled by the switch over there on the far side. Inside here is going to be where your battery is located. This guy here is basically set up to where you can download an app and Pretty much it'll sync up to where you can kind of monitor the battery. This other one here is gonna, this is gonna be for when you go to winterize your camper. There's a valve right inside here that you would turn. And then from there, you're basically using the water pump to winterize. The other valve down here, it's this flat one down there. I don't know if you can see that back there. That there is gonna be so you can drain the fresh water tank for when the tank is empty. I'll go ahead and basically just pull this guy up and I'll start draining the fresh water tank. I do always like to recommend, try your best not to pull too hard on those. Uh, I have actually pulled them clean out during testing of uh, campers before. So don't try to yank on them real hard. Be gentle. Be gentle. Uh, basically over here, you got where you can store your seven way. Pretty much you would hook right into here. Your hookup for when you're gonna hook it up to the truck, plug into here, and then of course your other end will go into the tow vehicle. Up here is gonna be your battery disconnect. So basically when you're storing the camper, you would just turn this key and it disconnects the camper from the battery so nothing would potentially drain it. Although you got the solar panels that'll help kind of keep it going charged. This here is if for some reason the battery is dead, you are able to at least hook up jumper cables to it and you can still be able to raise and lower it with your remote control, which we'll show you guys that in here in just a moment. And then that was our switch for the front there. Next, we're gonna have where we would hook up for our city water. With this, it is recommended you have a pressure regulator on the water spigot. From there, your options, if you want to put an inline water filter in and then your blue or white water drinking hose. From there, you'll hook up to this, you're ready to start using the water system right away. Down below that is going to be where you would fill the fresh water tank. So if you guys are going somewhere that water isn't being provided for you, you can fill that tank up here. Just read the monitor panel inside for when it reads full. You do want to shut that water off. You don't want to wait for that water to start shooting back out of here. Over time, that can cause damage to both the outside and the inside where the hose is connected on the back side of this. Next, we're gonna have a propane tank. It is a 30 pound tank. This guy was filled, uh, minus what we use to test the propane system with. And this guy here just basically goes to secure it into place, goes right through here and it has a wing nut that will secure that down. We'll leave that open to make sure we get that put back up. You got your little outside sprayer shower kind of area here. It's got the little sprayer end on it with different settings. The options are hot and cold water. And this guy is just a quick, quick disconnect. Just like so. I believe this key here was the 751 key. This one actually looks like it might be the gray key as well. Most shower ports are 751. Yep, okay, so it is also the gray key.
Here's gonna be your 30 amp power cord. It does come with the coach. Here's where your cable and satellite hookup is. So if you have a satellite dome or things like that, it would hook up to here and you would hook up to the port inside. If you're using a campground cable, you would hook up to this side, but you do have to turn off the TV antenna booster. And I will show you where that is once we have stepped inside. Right underneath here is where your low point drains are gonna be. Basically with those guys, it's whenever you go to winterize the coach, you are trying to get most of the water out of the camper and the antifreeze when you're done winterizing. Take, take off those caps, basically go through and open up all your faucets, press the pedal on the toilet, try to get all that, trying to make sure there isn't no pressure left in those lines. Uh, I always like to recommend though, when you're done camping, take those caps off, open up the faucet. As you're riding home, that air is gonna blow through the lines and help push any excess water out for you so no water is usually left in there where it becomes stagnant or bad. And then next you got your, pretty much the back of the furnace, your intake and exhaust. And it even tells you here that you don't want to block these guys so it can properly breathe. But we do like to recommend getting mud dauber screens. They look like a couple eyeballs go right over these. It helps keep mud daubers and wasps from getting in there and creating nests. Up top is where your vent is for the stove. The inside flap does have to be popped open when you are using the vent on the stove. And then usually you got to secure it closed. You would definitely need a ladder for that. You also have an aftermarket, uh, basically on the go ladder, it's a telescope ladder. Basically it's got two hooks on it where it hooks to the top, and it'll telescope down so you can get up and inspect the roof. It is usually recommended you wanna inspect your roof every 90 to 120 days. And just make sure no, that lap seal hasn't kind of created any air bubbles from being pulled down the road and uh, may have popped. Or over time the seal will start to dry out and it'll start cracking. When those happens, you want to clean those areas and then put new lap sealant down. You can usually do that a couple of times before it is recommended you want to peel all that old stuff off and just put a fresh coat down. Usually when you start adding those layers upon layers, uh, it starts, starts not doing its job like it should. Next is going to pretty much be the water heater area for the on-demand. The only thing to really show you in here is an on and off switch. So with this switch here, if this is not in the on position, uh, basically your control panel inside it will not have power as well so if i turn this off right now we would have no power at the control panel to where we can choose our desired water temperature setting uh, a lot of times you'll do this whenever you go to winterize the coach uh because this guy does get winterized as well uh but you turn this off so that way it isn't trying to heat up that antifreeze as you're winterizing and then you do have a pressure relief valve down here as well this guy always floats around, so you always got to kind of help line him up whenever you're going to get it put back on. This here is where you would open up to where you can be able to hook up your sewer hose and then dump. Your valves for that is going to be located right over here underneath this compartment door here. So you got your, right now they are open, so you got your black handle for the black tank and then the gray handle for your gray tank. Whenever you go to dump, it's always recommended you do black first, then closet, and then do your gray. This guy does not have the black tank flush on it, so usually it would not hurt, or kind of recommended maybe get a wand to where you can stick it in there. You, you know, you've got a couple different varieties, but it'll help clean that tank out for you, so no nastiness will usually kind of get left behind or anything like that. So basically at the back, it is pre-wired for an observational backup camera here. Uh, the company name is Voyager. Uh, basically, the wiring is there so you can power a camera. It doesn't necessarily technically would have to be Voyager. It could be another brand as well. You got your outside porch light. I'll show you that switch for that in just a second. Uh, you do got the storage compartments down here. And these guys on each side. You usually store your power cord in there. Uh, this key is going to be the 545 key. And the manufacturer does only supply one of these keys, so try not to lose this key. Uh, I don't know why they don't send two of them with it. All right, so next, basically, with your entry door, that is going to be your purple key. For the door handle lock itself, key is going to go in and it turns to the right. It locks the handle and you're able to pull that key out as soon as you lock your handle. 
for your deadbolt. To lock the deadbolt, you have to turn the key to the left and usually you'll hear that click showing you that you locked your deadbolt. You're also unable to pull that key out. You have to bring it back straight up and down to pull that key out. If you think you locked your deadbolt, you turned it to the right. You're, as you see, the key comes out, it shows you to not lock the deadbolt. It has to be turned to the left. All right, inside here, basically this is where your remote's gonna be for the operation of this guy. Uh, usually you gotta press this to kind of turn it on. You gotta usually hold these guys for about six seconds or so. Kind of helps sync the remote to the system. And then from there, you're able to raise and lower your unit. Basically how we get on and off the tow vehicle, leveling it out if we're, get, if we're setting it on the ground, but you do want to try to keep it as close to the ground as possible. And that's even what this sticker here tries to tell you. It's a tip hazard sticker. This camper is designed for the truck use. When using outside the bed of a truck, this camper needs to be stabilized under the floor and the bunk area. So basically they just want to make sure that you got it as close to the ground as possible where there isn't a whole lot of wiggle room but you do need to try to support the front overhang because that is basically where your bed is located. All right, you do have a little storage guy down here as well. Watch your knob when you're stepping down. The guy can easily get stepped on and the screw can get bent if you are not careful. I'm gonna have my camera lady pivot over here a little bit for me. So basically right over here is gonna be where our control panel is located. It will tell you the status of your battery, the status of the fresh tank. As you see, I still got a third of water in that guy. Your black tank is empty and the gray tank is empty and they will fill as one third, two thirds, and then full. Right here is the water pump switch when right now it is in the on position. You got tank heaters. So the tank heaters are basically heating pads on the bottom of the tanks. You got built in sensors. So whenever the tanks get below a certain temperature they'll automatically come on and they'll shut off once it reaches a desired set temps. They're already pre-programmed into the system, into the programming of that, of those heater pads. Uh, but this does have to be on for those to be operational. Uh, then you got your living room lights. This is that porch light right here. Then you got awning one, which is gonna be the awning on the back side of the coach. And awning two is gonna be on the side. And then you got your awning one for for the back and awning two for the side as well. You got your GFCI outlet located right here. So some of the outlets ain't working throughout the coach. They got this GFCI sticker. Come see if this guy hasn't been tripped. This here is actually gonna be light. It's for your ambiance lights. So you can actually dim them. They're kind of dimmable. So you can have a nice, if you wanna have a little romantic evening, you kind of dim those lights down and then off. You'll feel a little click when you go to turn it off. This is that control panel for the on-demand water heater. Pretty much your power to turn it off, turn it on. You can change it to Celsius if you wanted to read Celsius. And then here's where you can adjust the temperature output. It only goes as high as 124 degrees. And then next to that's where our control panel is for the solar panels. Basically monitors the battery. Once the battery gets to a level that it needs to be charged, it allows that power to come through to charge the batteries and then helps maintain it so that they don't generally go bad. A little cubby down here at the bottom where your other set of keys are. All right, now we can step in real quick. Right here to the side, it's gonna be where our switch is to bring our slide room in and out. This is a Swintec style slide. One thing you do have to note with those is that the gears that are on the side of the slide, you never wanna lubricate those. Okay, um, basically when they start getting dirty, it's recommended you to clean them with soap and water. Okay, and then rinse them off. You don't wanna be using no kind of lubricant. Uh, basically they work on two independent motors that talk to each other through a control panel. And um, that lubricant can cause them not to read right or cause things to start damaging and happening. Uh, one thing to also note is that with the Swintec slide, it's either all the way out or all the way in. There is no halfway position. Uh, it throws off the memory of the system when you start doing that. Right here is also going to be your fire extinguisher. All right, as we step inside, uh, basically you got your lights there. They turn on with the center push button. 
And here's going to be your manuals for majority of the items inside the coach. Uh, if there isn't a manual in here pertaining to something, a lot of times you'll have to look for it online. A lot of companies are starting to switch to online manuals. Uh, so a lot of the paper manuals are just not coming out as often anymore. Uh, but basically, it's I got majority of that all placed inside here. And basically what was in here comes out is with it. These are extra ba uh, screws for the battery. Uh, information on the battery there. This is so if you had to manually crank your uh, your jacks, and let's hope we don't ever come to that because it's not a fun process. And then basically I got all our manuals put in the sleeve here so they're kind of there. Uh, this was a lot of the TV stuff here uh, that you won't need. It was just in the packages with the TV so they uh, manufacturers do throw it in with the coach. You'll never use the TV legs, anything like that, but they're there. Now this piece of paper here is a pretty nice important piece of paper. This here is your v, uh, appliance info sheet basically. So basically it tells you the serial number to every appliance in the coach. Nice thing is if something happens to something they may ask you, the warranty person may ask you for the serial number. Um, this thing's kind of helpful, um, kind of gives you a nice reference guide for that. A lot of times you can also be able to find those serial numbers pretty easy on the items as well. Uh, sometimes they're located inside doors or right inside the door, things along that nature. Uh, I believe the stove, you actually have to lift the stove top up and it's underneath. I put my keyboard in here. Let's not forget that guy. Uh, next, your bed does, or your table does break down into a bed. Uh, basically, you would pop this guy off. These legs actually twist tight to lock in, so you would unthread them, pull them out, and then the bed will basically sit right here on these guys. And then from there, you put these cushions right on top of the bed to fill it, you know, on the table to fill it in to make the bed. Next, you guys got the really nice uh, refrigerator. Uh, basically, you know, if you're here cooking, you're able to go to this side, grab your stuff, grab what you would need, be able to continue to cook. Always make sure that it's good, snug, tight, open and close. You are able to adjust. It's a multi-airflow, so you're able to adjust that. And I have it basically set on the dot. The dot is the recommended setting. Make sure this side is always closed. So it's the middle of the night. We're kind of thirsty. We can come out of bed. You can actually open it from the other side. Ooh. So you're able to come and get your drink if you wanted to. Okay. Down here is where your setting control is for basically the refrigerator part. <clears throat> right now I do have it set in four. Uh, generally, if you guys are doing a lot of the off-grid kind of camping or boondock camping, you want to try to get the best out of life out of the battery, I would always try to recommend it to usually um, two or three. That way it's not trying to pull as much off of your battery. And then your solar panels can usually try to keep up. Most of these, when they're in the high positions, like four or five, um, on a warmer day, this guy will be trying to pull some power. And um, the solar panels can sometimes struggle to keep going with that. Uh, but basically, you just push that set button right there. You're able to change it. And then if you press and hold, usually it's about 10 seconds. It will go to the off position. The light, will, I believe the light shuts off. And then the two and three will actually light up, showing that it's in the off position. And then you got some of your accessories here that they um, basically, little egg holder. Um, this was in with the manual. Honestly, not sure what it would go to, to be honest with you. Uh, sometimes they don't use everything that comes in the packages. Same with the TVs, things like that. But it was in the package, so it comes in. All right, next you're going to have up here your bed area. The bed does have basically night reader lights on each side. Um, if you push the button in the middle the first time, it just turns on the light where the button is. If you push it again, then the light itself would come on. You got USB hookups to charge your phone and 110 outlets on each side of the bed. Our fan is located up there, up top. Basically, you would open that guy up. Oh, Watch your knock head. myself out. Basically, you just open this guy. And then from there, you push and turn it on. It's got a fan speed settings between one and four. One usually actually takes a second before it actually starts spinning. 
So uh, always be mindful of that. But basically it'll remember the last setting you had it at, which I have it on setting four. And then you can just turn it off and then close your lid. And then you do also have a TV over here in the corner. It basically will lock in on the sidewall here. See, still the phone from the camera lady. So you guys can see that. But it basically will, basically slides. And this piece right here will lock in. Thank you, sir. Hopefully I didn't mess nothing up. I don't think you did. You're a pro. She, she's the camera lady. That's why I'm, I'm not the camera guy. Uh, you do also have storage up here on the sides of the beds as well. I believe this this side over here on the what you would consider the driver's side is the fire exit window. Right. Next, we're going to have the bathroom. Your light switch is going to be right here on this side. You got our medicine cabinet. You got your, this here is basically for your shower drain. You got our nice little shower, good shower head there. Oh, that's a nice shower basically, head. Basically, this guy here will actually stop the flow of water. Push that button, it reduces it. So you can try to get the most out of your hot water. A lot of that's usually designed for, uh, for like water heaters that are only like six gallons. So you want to try to get the most out of your hot water. Nice thing is, is you got the on-demand water heater. Next, we're going to have the toilet area. As you see, we got a little water in there. We always want to try to make sure there's some water in, in that bowl so that seal don't get dry rotted or brittle. When we're going to go do our business, you would lightly press on the pedestal. And it will uh, add water in there for us. Then we do our business. And then we all the way down to flush. So it is always recommended that when you first go to start use your tank, you always want to do put a chemical in there, whether it's a liquid or a pouch. If you're using the liquid, it is usually recommended two ounces will treat a 40 gallon tank. Uh, I am pretty sure that this tank is not that large on this. Uh, so I would probably say one ounce of the liquid. Uh, you can buy a shot glass where you can just pour it in there and a gallon of water, you're good to go. If you're gonna use the pouch, I always recommend putting a little more water in here. I usually will probably try to fill it up, probably about yay so, put that pouch in. I want to make sure that pouch dissolves. I have actually seen it where <clears throat> I've used pouches and doing other campers, and when you go to dump it, I have seen it where the uh, pouch came out complete and didn't dissolve. Uh, so you just want to make sure those pouches dissolve. We don't want to leave all that water. Uh, basically, it is labeled there that you do your water pump access area is going to be behind that panel. Uh, you just remove those four screws, and then you do got storage there as well. Next, this guy here is going to operate the furnace. Uh, basically, you'll feel a, a click, and then from there, and then it fires up. It's just single ducted, so it just comes out of just that guy right there. Usually, if you can look through the fins good enough, you'll know, usually there's like an eyelet so you can see the flame when it fires up. And then turn it off and just push it all the way over, and there's a click that you'll hear. Up here is going to be the air conditioner, basically manually controlled. Um, this guy does it's optional heat, so it, you can get an aftermarket heat strip to put in it, but these guys usually don't come with them at, at the time. Uh, but basically the gray side is going to be the fan only and then the blue side is going to be the air conditioner and then from there you're able to adjust that temperature setting that you would like it to desire where it would basically turn the compressor on and off all the way down usually that sucker just wa runs wide open got your little spice rack area here up top is going to be the microwave pretty self-explanatory with the microwave i always like to say set the time on here you guys go out, do something, you come back, you see that the timer was not set. Uh, that shows you there was a power failure at the campsite. Uh, so you would want to look into seeing if it was at the campsite itself or from the electric company. 
a lot of times if you're at a bigger RV park, uh, you're liable to experience surges sometimes, especially during the summertime. We've got a bunch of 50 amp campers trying to run two air conditioners. Uh, you start getting a lot of draw off a lot of campers when they start adding up. You got your hood range where you got your light and your fan. Once again, that fan's not going to work if that, you know, it's just going to be making noise basically, uh, unless that outside is open. And then the stove, pretty much you just turn. Turn this guy to the light position and then turn and it will fire. And then from there, set your temperature to whatever you would need today. Uh, the downfall I noticed with this is that this sparker is for just the top burner only. You do have to use a barbecue lighter when you are lighting the oven. Uh, basically, though, you're going to turn it to where it says pilot on. You got to push and hold this in and then you're going to light it. Once it's lit, you keep that held in for seven to eight seconds and then it should fire and then set your desired temperature you got storage up above as well you got lights you do have a 110 up there i promise that corner will be fixed i noticed it the other day and i forgot i forgot all about it but that guy will get fixed <laughs> All right, so we do got two remotes here, basically one for the TV in the back and then the TV up front. Uh, your other remote here is going to be for the radio over here in the corner. So you heard the outside speakers. With the outside speakers, that's speaker zone B. Speaker zone A is your inside speakers. You can have A or B on. You can have them both on or the, one or the other. Uh, this guy is a CD player, but also your DVD player. So I always do recommend that if you are watching a movie, make sure that you turn speaker zone B off. So that way people outside is not hearing your movie. Especially if you guys are trying to spice up the night and you put a risque movie in there. You don't need people coming knocking on your door saying, hey, either my kids are hearing, hearing some funny noises or, hey, you guys need some extra hands. Um, there's those kind of people out there. Just be aware. So always just make sure that that outside speakers are turned off when you're watching a movie. For the TV, all right, here's going to be your TV antenna booster that we were talking about. So if you're going to be using uh, uh, campground cable, you would turn this off. There's a switch right here that turns that off and then allows the cable feed to come through. Basically, when this is on, the antenna is considered to be a primary signal source. So you got to shut that source off for the cable signal to come through. And then the satellite just hooks up to the other port. I'm going to turn this guy on. Just a and basically your remotes are going to be in this drawer here oh they do also provide caps that when you actually take your legs out of the table these guys will actually sit inside those holes so you got like an open hole there all right so with the tv usually when you get to a new area if you ain't close to the st louis area you are going to have to rescan for channels basically to do so let me move that so i ain't trying to over talk it we got our menu button here. We press menu. I like to push the arrow key back one time. It takes us to channels. From there, you can choose either we're using the antenna on the roof or we can switch it to cable. And then from there, you would go to your auto scan. But for air cable or air natural air TV, go down auto scan, start scan. And now it's going to do its channel run. I believe the last time we did the scan, I believe it did pick up 43 channels. But depending on weather, you know, cloudy days, you may get you may get less channels. There was a storm that came through a couple weeks ago. Weirdly enough, I scanned and I was picking up. I picked up a channel we've never picked up before, and I don't even know where it was from. But it was coming through on the clouds. <laughs> uh, so, real quick, right before we uh, wrap up. Down below is where your fuse control panel box is located. Anything that runs off sure power, like your air conditioner, outlets, things like that, it's going to be on the breakers. Everything that runs off the battery is going to be on the fuses, and they do have everything labeled for you what they are. I did also, right there behind the camera lady down there, is going to be where our LP carbon monoxide detector is located. It is recommended that guy should be tested every 7 to 14 days. And basically to do that, there's a button on there you just simply press to perform that test.
And now basically we're performing that test. It'll beep like that again, and then it'll do another style of beep. From there, we've basically performed our test. Uh, it's important to test that because if that goes off, it is potentially sensing either carbon monoxide in the coach or propane. If that goes off, you do want to take emergency precautions by basically getting out of the coach. The first person out is trying to turn off the propane at the canister. The next person is trying to open up some windows. We're not trying to turn on any fans because we're not trying to create an electrical spark. Okay, and then we're going to get at least 50 feet away for about 15 minutes. After that 15 minute time frame, I always recommend one person comes back in. This is the first place I always recommend looking. Always the stove. The reason for that is because a lot of times you might not be paying attention. You might be leaned up against it. Well, when that's pushed in, that's just allowing that propane to come out. And not only that, you know, you're leaned up, your belt can catch it, uh, you know, but you're able to turn knob. Uh, so just be mindful. Uh, if it's not that, uh, you turn it back on and it's going off again, do turn it off and do have it come and look at service because it's sensing something going on in the coach. Uh, with that being said, there are other things that can cause that to go off, such as hairspray, certain cleaning chemicals, and animal gases. And I say hairspray, but realistically, it seems like a lot of even aerosol style mm -hmm. cleaners can also to cause that to go off. So basically, just anything that's kind of uh, aerosoled, um, certain cleaning chemicals, and um, animal gases. So just be mindful of that. All right, so we'll show you this here real quick, how this kind of kind of starts to work. So I'm going to turn on our hot water right here. This guy's automatically going to fire up. It's saying, hey, I'm calling for water. It's turning on the fan to get going, and now it's igniting the flame. And it's t and since this is the temperature that is sensing as it's coming through your water heater. So as you see, it's slowly getting that climb, starting to do that work. It'll take it a minute. Uh, it does take it a minute to actually get going. But as you see, it is starting to take off. And we should get to here about 124, because that's where we're kind of at max. You know, we got it all the way up. But it takes that second to read. Now, there we go. Now basically it's going good it's and it's good and hot. So then when you go to shut it off, it's going to sense that we ain't calling for that demand anymore. So it shuts off the flame and the water supply, but it's got that fan continuing to run to cool it back down. All right. So from there, we have basically made our way around the coach. Uh, hopefully this was knowledgeable and informational for you guys. If you do have any questions, Please feel free to call us and we do our best to answer those questions for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.